Hello, today I will show you how to implement Kotlin multi-platform application with separate UIs on the Android and iOS. Here we will implement the Android UI of course with the Compose and the iOS application with the Swift UI. So, uh, today we will be building the simple uh, chat application with two screens. So we have this first screen with the chat where we can uh, just ask some questions or whatever. the chat will respond and we will have also the uh, settings screen where we can provide our OpenAI API key. So in, in order to implement this what's the most important is that we won't be using typical view model or typical navigation that is usually used and uh, we'll be using the decompose library which provides some easy to use abstraction layer over the navigation and, and business logic in the application. Uh, so in order to start with such application you of course need to uh, select in the Kotlin multi-platform project wizard uh, that you don't want to have shared UI and then when you have the, the project uh, ready you need to add the coin uh, library to your build Gradle in order to have the dependency injection. That's what we will be starting with uh, today, the setup of the dependency injection. So, uh, once you add the uh, coin libraries to, to your project, like so, you need to define the coin modules where you provide all the dependencies that you want to provide. So, we have the chat component for the screen, uh, for the chat screen, and the settings component for the settings screen. Then there is some chat service for actual implementation of the OpenAI. Uh, API calls and other dependencies that we'll be using. Then you need to have the coin init file with the function do init coin. This is used to properly uh, initialize the coin in the iOS application. Uh, in order to initialize the application in the iOS, you need to use this in your iOS app file and call the uh, coin init. Uh, do init coin. This will set up all the uh, all the dependency uh, providing in the application. Uh, in order to initialize it in Android, you just need to start the coin like you would do it in normal uh, Android application. Now we'll move to the compose library, which allows you to implement the navigation and something like view model, where you can define the state. Uh, provide the state to the UI and also define some uh, actions that you will perform from the screens. So let's start with the root component. In the root component we initialize all the uh, classes that we'll be using later. So here we have the child which defines the screens that we'll be having in the application. Uh, when we navigate to each screen uh, we'll get this uh, this object of chat child or settings child depending on what screen you are navigating to. Then uh, in the implementation of the root component we have navigator and uh, this is my custom interface implementation. Uh, here we define the navigation paths that we have and then it is implemented in, in the root component. We provide this navigator to each screen to allow navigating properly to different screens. The navigation is stack navigation provided by the compose library. Here we define the type that will be defining the paths. The config we have here on the bottom and here we define the paths uh, that will be navigating to. So when you are navigating to the settings screen you provide this. So we can see it, you see it here like we navigate to the settings screen. If you needed to provide any uh, parameters to the screen, like ID, when you navigate from the list to the detailed screen, you would make it just a data class with some ID. But we don't need it here, uh, so let's revert it. Then you define the stack with the navigation, the serializer, uh, which will serialize the, the paths. This is using the Kotlin serialization, so it will be always serialized to, to the JSON, so it's possible to provide it 
in the navigation. Then we define the initial route, which is the chat. We, uh, we tell it to handle bug button. So when we use the system navigation to bug, uh, it will navigate to the previous screen. And the child factory, which is responsible for uh, converting from the config to the actual uh, child, which is, for example, chat child or settings child. The children here contain the component, which will be accessible for the UI in the native platforms. So here we have the chat component, uh, which is injected from the uh, coin modules here. We inject it uh, because we need uh, some additional dependencies in here, for example, the repository, the chat repository. Uh, and it's just easier to inject it because we don't need to instantiate and manage the dependencies uh, manually in the root component. And once uh, this is converted, it will be provided from this uh, navigation stack in the uh, UI. The navigation is being set up in native platforms. So in Android, it is in main activity. Here we provide the uh, default root component with default component context. Those are um, methods from provided from the decompose and it will actually provide the life cycle and other important stuff to the uh, root component. Once we have it, we provide it to the app where we actually set up the theme and the navigation. The children component is provided by the compose as well and it manages the, the navigation. We provide here the stack from the root component. This is the navigation here that we defined as follows. We define some stack animation, the animation of the uh, navigation. And here from the children component, we get the actual child that is being displayed right now. And we just define what needs to be displayed here. So here we have the chat screen, which is uh, just displaying this chat UI that we had in here. Uh, and to the chat screen, we provide the chat component, which is our something like view model to define the actions and state. And the component is uh, provided from the child. So this is the thing that we actually injected in here. Then the chat screen just uses this component like here to subscribe the state and also call some actions like send message in, in here with the send button. Uh, on the iOS, to set it up, uh, we have the app delegate. Here we provide the application lifecycle to the default root component and initialize the root component. Then it is used in iOS app. Here we have the app delegate and we initialize the content view, the main uh, UI of the application with this root component. And here the content view uh, similarly uses the stack view uh, provided by the decompose library. But in order to have this view, uh, stack view, and other uh, classes provided by the decompose, you need to manually add it to your project as decompose couldn't provide it with the libraries. Uh, I will provide the link uh, to the decompose documentation where they explain how to add these files. So for example, we, we have this stack view added from the decompose we have the state value and also we have the observable value. And as the uh, iOS doesn't have the coroutines uh, and we want to be able to update the UI of the screen when the state changes, we need to use the value from the value class from the decompose library as well. So as you can see here in the implementation of the chat component, we have the state uh, which is the value class uh, from the decompose library. And we have the send message uh, for the action of sending the message to the uh, AI. And also we have the on settings click to navigate to the settings screen. Uh, but as you can see here in the component, we are using actually the state flow from coroutines to, uh, to manage the state. But then we convert it to, to the value. This is the custom extension function that I've created to, uh, to convert this state flow to the value. Mm, I prefer to use the state flow inside of the components because it gives more flexibility where you can combine few state flows if needed and then provide some common state like here. 
then in Android it is pretty simple to listen to the state changes as there is this decompose function subscribe as state and it just up, uh, updates your UI. On the iOS side we need to do something more. So as I mentioned before we need to have this state value class from the decompose. It needs to be added to your product and it converts the value from the Kotlin into the servable object uh, in the iOS which updates the Swift uh, UI screen state. So we have this state value in our UI in the chat screen view with the chat state which was defined in the Kotlin multi-platform module and then uh, when we initialize we need to provide this value from the chat component to the state value object in here. Let's get back for a moment to the components of the screen. Uh, as you can see the chat component and other components like setting co settings component have the component context they implement by providing the uh, actual implementation here from the root component. This allows us to override the back handler so we can provide custom action on clicking back and we can also uh, add some events on the lifecycle events like on create, on stop, on start, etc. So this is pretty useful. Uh, what is more, you can also provide uh, preserving the state of the screen with the state keeper. So summing up, uh, when you plan to build the application with native with native UIs, it is worth it to use the decompose library. I think it's the most mature right now, and it provides you all the tools you need to build the Kotlin multi-platform application. Uh, with the native UIs, with the navigation, the components, which allows you to easily implement the, the logic with some additional uh, repositories injected. The Kotlin multi-platform is pretty mature right now and it's worth using it with native UIs if you really need to have the separate UI on both platforms or the application is uh, complex enough to make it sensible to to use the native UIs. So thank you for watching and see you next time.